In this lesson, we are going to cover the first of the sketch tools, and that's going to be the line command. But before we do that, we must first start a new part file. So I'm going to go up to New, select New, Part, and then OK. And the part environment opens. Now, anytime you go into the part assembly or the drawing environment, the very first thing you should do is verify that you are working in the correct units. So if you look at the bottom right hand corner of the screen, you can see my units are millimeters, grams, and seconds. And if this is not correct for you, you select the list and choose the appropriate unit. Now let's begin. First, we need to create a new sketch. So I'm going to select a sketch icon. It prompts me to select a plane for the sketch. So I'm going to go out to the screen and select the front plane. The plane revolves around normal to your site. And now I'm ready to begin sketching my line. Going to the sketch ribbon, notice we have the line icon. But right next to it, we have an arrow pointing down. This represents a drop down list with additional line options. So if I select it, notice I also have center line, which I'll be covering in a later lesson. So let's begin. I'll select the line command. Property Manager opens. I'm going to go out to the screen and left mouse click for my first point. As I move away from that first point, notice I'm getting a preview of a line. I'm stretching the line as I move it further away from that first point. That's called rubber banding. I'll left mouse click for my second point. Notice as I move the cursor away, it keeps me in the line command, and this next line segment is chained to the first line segment. I left mouse click again, and there's another line. Left mouse click again, and there's a third line. Now at some point, you're gonna to want to end out of this command. So how do we do that? One method is to right mouse click and select end chain. Another method is to double click. So I'm gonna double click right here, and notice it takes me out of the line command. You have to be careful with this option though. If you double click too slow, it will give you another line segment. A third option, which is my preference, is to simply tap the escape key on your keyboard. Now, if you don't like the way the lines are chained to one another, there is another method for creating lines. So if I go back into the line command, instead of left mouse clicking for a point, when you left mouse click, hold the button down, drag the line out, release the left mouse button, and you have a single line where a second line is not being chained to it. Okay, let's close out of the line property manager. Now let's talk about deleting some of these entities. Now if you only have a couple lines that you need to delete, it may be wise just to select each piece of geometry and then tap the delete key on the keyboard. However, if you have a lot of geometry to delete, what you can do is left mouse click and hold the left mouse button down in an open area of the screen. As you move the cursor to the right, you get a blue box. We call this a window box. And notice this blue box is bounded by a blue continuous line type. Now this is a window box. Any geometry completely inside of this window box will be selected. So right now what you see in the screen only this one line here will be selected. So if I release the left mouse button, notice the one line selected. I can tap the delete key in the keyboard and it removes that one piece of geometry. However, if you hold the left mouse button down and drag to the left instead of to the right, you see a green box. This is called a crossing box. And notice the boundary lines of this crossing box are dashed. What does a crossing box represent? Well, a crossing box says anything that you have inside of this crossing box or crossing through it will be selected. So currently, I have this piece of geometry inside of the crossing box and this piece of geometry crossing the box. So if I release the left mouse button, notice both items are selected 
I can now select the delete key on the keyboard and both items are deleted.